All right, guys, I'm in love. And the saddest part is I'm in love with a piece of technology, NeoVim. Now, I didn't really think I'd ever get to this point because I was always kind of like a VS Studio code guy. I was kind of a newbie. And I was like, ah, I'm never gonna get to the point where I'm only using the keyboard. The mouse is kind of an afterthought. I don't even really know how to copy and paste in Vim. I barely even knew how to get out of it. And I've evolved a little bit. I decided, you know what, if I'm gonna learn Go, if I'm gonna learn a programming language again, like in depth, I'm gonna get my hands dirty, I'm gonna do it as the nerdy pro way of doing things would go, right? I'm gonna install Vim, I'm gonna install NeoVim, I'm gonna trick out my editor, my IDE, my custom environment, right? It's gonna be dope, it's gonna be sweet. But I was like, all right, I don't really know anything about NeoVim and I still have a lot to learn with Vim, right? And if you don't know what Vim is, it's a free open source screen-based text editor. So if we just take it like for, um, if we just if we just look at like a basic file, like let's say I do touch um, hello.txt and then I do vi hello.txt. This would be like your Vim editor, right? It comes pre-installed on like every computer. You can do I to just start inserting text. It'll put you in insert mode and you can just say like hello world, escape, w colon wq and I'll save it. And then if you cat the hello.txt, bam, you've successfully written a line in Vim to an editor. But it gets way more complex than that, right? You can do a lot of crazy stuff with Vim. Um, Vim Actions is something that I think like you should learn first if you're start getting started with Vim, even before you start with NeoVim, which this video kind of talks about. But NeoVim is sort of like your Vim editor, but on steroids, and you can do a lot of fancy stuff with it. So if we look at like what NeoVim really is, um, I think like, it says it's a hyper extensible Vim based text editor, which means you can pretty much like run plugins that'll install a bunch of crap that tricks out your editor. That's really how I view it, like syntax highlighting, um, LSP, themes, um, terminal emulators, right? It does all that cool, fancy stuff. But what does that really even mean? And the way I learned over the last three days of using NeoVim, which is why I'm kind of hooked on it now, is I've been binging Joe Sean Martinez's video. Now, I will 100% plug this man up because he makes kick-ass tutorials and he really takes the time to like break down how to set up NeoVim, how to use it, like all the keyboard shortcuts to do everything, um, what keys he even pressed, like they're in his videos. It's like he does colon Q, colon Q shows up in his video. So you know exactly what he's doing. He's not doing any magic. Um, and that's why I noticed a lot of like Vim, NeoVim tutorials do. Like they'll get somewhere and you'll be like, how the hell did you just get there, right? And then you're lost and you quit and you get depressed and you're like, I'm never doing this again. But he's awesome, so go check him out. Now, what I did was I pretty much copied his video like to a T. And if you see his editor, you're gonna watch this video and be like, why does your NeoVim editor look very similar? So let's just do it. I brew installed NeoVim. So that's the first thing you need to do. If we do nvim dot, you're gonna see I have this fancy schmancy looking editor and it's because I have this uh, GUI theme. Now we'll look at that and how I configured it, but you'll see that this is kind of like my entire file system, right? I have my config, I have my desktop, my development, my downloads, my Go vs Python file, whatever, right? And you can just, by just clicking enter into one of these, like let's say config, you'll see that this kind of nests into that directory. And then if I go under NeoVim, which is where you configure NeoVim from, then I can go in and start modifying my files, my templates, installing plugins, all that good stuff. But let's start from the top. The first thing you need to do to install NeoVim and get started is under your .config, you're going to create a NeoVim directory. You probably don't even have one. From there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create an init.lua file under it. So if you're not even in NeoVim, let's just look at it from like a pure terminal perspective when you open it, you're gonna do cd uh, squiggly tilde thing backslash dot config. Once you're in here, run ls, you're gonna see that there, you might have NeoVim, you might not, but run, if you don't run mkdir dot, uh, mkdir NeoVim or nvim. Once you're in nvim, you're gonna see I have an init.lua and a lua file or a lua directory with a lazy lock.json. Disregard the lazy lock.json. But the lua folder, 
is really going to contain a lot of like my scripts and directories. So let's look at just the uh, init.wo file by doing cat. You can see it says require sean.core.options sean.lazy. Now what this is doing is it's referencing a file path in my NeoVim config. So what you'll see is under Lua, I have a Sean directory. So this Lua directory is actually emitted when you require it in your init.lua. And what that happens is when I run nvim, in, if I just run nvim, what first happens is that init.lua file kicks off. So what happens is it, the init.lua requires these, fold, these uh, folders and files and just pumps everything into that and then takes all that. It's kind of like calling code from another file or whatnot, right? So let's look at what's in the Sean directory. Well, I have my lazy.lua, my plugins, and my core. Let's start with what lazy.lua is to begin with. If I do cat lazy.lua, you're going to see that this junk right here is actually copy and pasted. I didn't write this, so don't get like fooled by this. What does this look like? Well, if I go into installation dot lazy or lazy dot folk dot io installation which is lazy neovim it's a package manager for neovim i just copy and pasted this this is it i bootstrapped it right and joe sean talks about it in his tutorial but that's all that is and then you'll see there's this require lazy dot setup and then it imports my plugins and my plugins dot lsp so what does all that garbage mean well, essentially, if we look at oop, ls and we look at my plugins directory, you're going to see I have color scheme, nvim-cmp.lua, nvim tree. These are all plugins, and this allows me to do fancy schmancy stuff in my environment. So if we first look at the color scheme, you're going to see that I return this little block and this is why I say it kind of looks like um, something like from JavaScript that feels like everything's an object in Lua for some reason, but I don't know if that's actually true. It's just what I've seen. Um, like blues 71 dash backslash vim nightfly GUI colors or GUI colors, right? This is what I'm loading in. And since I have this up here in my lazy.lua, which I'm bootstrapping into my init.lua file, it's loading that up and it's calling this color scheme which is why when I run nvim dot, you see this pretty blue and purple and navy blue contrasting scheme. So that's for starters, I'm loading up my color scheme. The next thing I have is this nvim tree. So if we look at nvim tree dot lua, and we're not even using NeoVim right now, I'm just explaining what I've installed and then we're gonna talk about what it looks like. So we return this nvim tree. What this does is it gives me my keyboard shortcuts and allows me to see my file structure. So if I do go into nvim dot, you're gonna see this loads up everything. But if I do dot uh, space tt, nothing loads up, right? And the reason for that is on the left-hand side, I have my, my nvim tree, my folder structure, right? On here, I have the script. So I'm looking at this file. Now, if I do space TT, you'll see that it toggles out. Space TT again, toggles in, right? And the reason for that is if we look at keymap.set TT, leader TT, this means space TT, what happens? The nvim tree toggles in. So if we go TT, cool, right? Freaking magic. Now let's quit out of this. Oop. So if we now look at let's say telescope.lua, this allows me to do some cool searching in NeoVim. So if I go nvim dot again, and then I open up telescope, you can see I have another key binding, which says space FF, search for files. And now you can see that I can do this fuzzy search for like anything. So if I want to do like, hello world, it would do it in that directory. But you can even get cooler than that. So there's also telescope old files or space OF, in my case, how I mapped it. Now I can look at existing files that I've seen before. So if I want to go look at, I don't know, maybe hello world.go in a different directory, it's going to remember what I've been in 
And then I can just hit enter and it brings me right there. Pretty sweet, right? And that's essentially what I've done so far with NeoVim. I haven't even got crazy with it. What I've also done is auto completion. So you'll see that under LSP directory, there's something called Mason, which is a plugin I'm using. Um, and essentially what this does is it LSPs. And I don't even know what LSP stands for. So let's look at it. Um, this is so much of a noob I am. I don't even know what LSP stands for. Like, uh, what, uh, what is LSP? Language server protocol, which is a set of rules that define how language clients and servers communicate. Okay, so pretty much what it does to me and what I see is that it handles auto completion and understands the language. You can see I like install packages for individual languages. So like Golang, HTML, CSS, Python, um, TypeScript, uh, Markdown, JS, Julia. Those are all languages that I added in my NeoVim autocomplete. So let's go back into my directory and then let's go into like go verse Python. And then let's go like nvim dot to open up this directory. If I go into let's say profiler.go file and then I want to complete some sort of golang I or go go file or go code, whatever you want to frame it as. If I do CSV underscore file, it's going to auto complete that. So this is knowing my code and saying, hey, auto complete this, right? Which is pretty, pretty darn cool. Um, so that's pretty much what I've done so far. And the last thing I will say about NeoVim and that I've learned so far, and I hope you guys in the comments kind of explain what you've done if you use NeoVim and if you've done anything really cool with it that I should install because I'm all game, um, is that you don't even really need your terminal. Like you don't need to be doing this, cd dot dot. You don't need to be doing like ls. Um, I guess if you want to know like file permissions, you would have to use the terminal. But if you're just like modifying and scrolling through stuff, you can just do um, nvim dot. And then you can really navigate everything through here. If you want like a file on your desktop, if you want to go in your documents and like maybe look at like, obviously a JPEG file is not going to show you that. So you, in that case, you would have to use something like uh, your finder. But if you wanted to like just modify texts, you can easily just do that directly from here, right? And it's it's pretty easy. So that's a video, um, NeoVim so far, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start diving into Go again. But if you guys got any ideas for NeoVim plugins? Let me know.